Hello and welcome back to the MCAT Club. <clears throat> Today, I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, welcome back Leonardo Radamile from the Cambridge Learning Center. Hi Leo, how are you? Good to see you, Don. Glad to be here. We have been talking for the last uh, couple of videos about just a, lot, a wide range of understanding relative to uh, rhetoric and grammar, uh, as well as uh, you know, linguistics, understanding of neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and just how to put all of those together relative to taking uh, a test like MCAT or MCAT 2015. And uh, in a previous video, we talked a little bit about test questions and answer choices and having a, a good sense and understanding of just how important it is to be aware of the detail relative to them. But now what I want to ask you is more about uh, understanding passage. And specifically this, so how does approaching a passage differ from how you would recommend that I approach, a, say, a question, test question, or a set of answer choices? That's an excellent question. And it, there's sort of an ironic answer in that the approach is the same, but very different uh -huh. at the same time. You're using the same elements, uh -huh. okay? Remember, in the MCAT, what you're using is grammatical analysis, rhetorical analysis, and looking at the relationship of ideas, and, and then being able to reflect on them. Now, in looking at passages, what you're doing is following the ideas, picking out the key ideas mm -hmm. using rhetorical skills, right. what's important and what's just information, since 80% of the questions are idea questions. Yeah. So sure. what you're doing is isolating using uh, rhetoric mm -hmm. and then reducing using grammar mm -hmm. and looking at the relationships. So rhetoric is primary, grammar is, the, is secondary, gives you the tool to reduce and clarify, relationship of ideas is third, okay? okay? Right. Now, when you go to questions and answers, you use the same skills, but you reverse them. Uh -huh. Since one word makes all the difference in a question or answer, what you really focus on is not the rhetoric, but the grammar. What precisely uh -huh. is this question or answer saying, mm -hmm. and in addition to that, paying real attention to modifiers, like that one word that can make all the difference. So the first thing that you do is a very, very careful grammatical analysis in the question and answer, rather than a rhetorical uh, analysis. Then you bring in rhetoric and you ask yourself, okay, what is the strategy of the question? What are they precisely looking for? So step number one there uh -huh. is to understand the grammar, precisely what it's saying, okay. then looking at the strategy. In the uh, analysis of text, you're doing it the opposite way. Uh -huh. First, you're looking at what are the key ideas rhetorically, mm -hmm. then using grammar to reduce and simplify. Think about it this way. The approach to uh, uh, text is like looking at gross physiology, yeah. looking at the relationship of the parts, okay? When you get to questions and answers, it becomes cytology. You're looking under a microscope at the mitochondria, the cell membranes, and everything else, and it's a very, very, very detailed analysis. Okay, so I think I get it, but honestly, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused I'm especially confused about like this one key part, which is uh, you say, you know, it's important when I read a passage to literally distill the passage down to the main ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I know what a main idea is? How can I figure that out? Okay, well, okay, every, going back to the, to the analogy of physiology, mm -hmm. every essay has a predictable gross morphology. Okay. Just like you can predict that a human has a head, a torso, two arms, two legs. Right. Okay. So the first thing is you've got your thesis paragraph, which is the first paragraph. That's where the main idea is going to be. Uh -huh. That's where the argument is that the author is going to prove throughout the essay. So if you can analyze the key ideas in the thesis paragraph, it gives you two great advantages. One, you know exactly what the main idea is that holds the whole essay together. Uh -huh. But in addition to that, what's really critical is if you understand those key ideas, they give you a blueprint of exactly how the essay is going to develop. So you can anticipate uh -huh. where you're going and you know how it's developing. Then after that, picking out the key ideas in each paragraph allows you to see how the arguments developed uh -huh. rather than getting drowned in information. Right. Okay. 
it gives you an X-ray or an MRI. Yes. Exactly what the essay is. It gives you the analytical tools to really understand what's going on. So I, I know you know a typical uh, MCAT or MCAT twenty fifteen passage, you know, is going to be relatively long. Sure. Um, I, I hear what you're suggesting may be to distill that long passage to something as simple as I don't know, eight, nine, ten single sentences. Exactly. What you can do, I, I'd say a, a, a few more than that, maybe around 12 to 15, but mm -hmm. you can get an essay that's 750 to 1,000 words. Yeah. And on the, you'll probably have maybe 12 to 15 key sentences. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be as long as 40 or 50, even 60 words. But right. you can get that sentence and grammatically cut it down to what its essentials are, where you're left with maybe five words. So instead of having a mass of information of 750 to 1,000 words, you've got 75 very clear mm -hmm. words that tell you precisely what the argument is. Okay, so that I understand, and I buy it, because you know, I see it all the time, uh, sure. both you know, in practice tests, but also all over writing. It, it sure. occurs constantly, right? Yeah. But you said something at the beginning, uh, and I think it's true, but I don't think it's true all the time, and that is that the, the, the thesis paragraph is the first paragraph, or the topic paragraph is the first paragraph. What do I do when uh, I'm reading and the first paragraph doesn't even feel anything like a, a topical paragraph? It's just some sort of uh, preamble. How do I know that the first paragraph is, in fact, sure. the thesis paragraph? Sure. How do I get that assurance? Okay, well, that situation is very rare. You might see that maybe one every 40 essays. Uh -huh. But if you know how to pick out key sentences, mm -hmm. okay, you will see usually in a, in, a, in a paragraph, a first paragraph like that, the only key sentence is going to be the conclusion sentence uh -huh. that's going to lead you right into what the, what the, what the uh, let's call it the thesis paragraph is. Right. And knowing rhetorical cues allows you to weigh the content of that paragraph. Mm -hmm. If you've got a first paragraph, that doesn't have key sentences in it, yeah. or only has one key sentence in it, then you know immediately it's going to be the next one. Uh -huh. That's where the content-rich passage is going to be. Mm -hmm. So th that's an analytical skill that's picked up very easily once you know the rhetoric. Awesome. Uh, you know, I'm fascinated, and I, want, I really want to spend more time talking with you about this, but we're out of time. Okay. Um, so, but I could talk with you about this for hours. It's, I think it's, it's an amazing uh, aspect of how, you know, you can sort of have this intersection point between standardized testing and the mind's uh, pliancy and the ability for all of us to really develop our minds to be really good at this skill, you know? Sure. It's a whole new domain of learning. It and is, it is. You know, what we tell our students in our courses is, it's not brain surgery, mm -hmm. I mean, but it is brain science. Right. And if you can master organic or biochem, and you know, you can certainly do this. Well, that makes me feel better. Okay. Uh, I think you guys have a, a free class that I, if I want to learn more, I can go in and I can sign up for. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. We have a, a one-hour free class that we offer every week, and it's a full hour of going into really, really deep, deep detail on exactly what the MCAT tests and what you need to, to know. And you know, it's free and students get an awful lot of information and we also open it up for an unlimited period of time for any questions and answers that they may have okay. after, after the, we give them the basics of what they need to know. Okay, good. So I'll put a link in the description um, and I'll put it here on the video as well so that uh, if you're watching this video and you want to click through and sign up for the free class, you can. Great. Appreciate Leo. it. Yeah, thank you very much for the time. I really appreciate it. Always good to spend time with you, Doug. Take care.